Alright guys, we are going to be talking about the last part of this rotation of motion, which is angular momentum, right? There's a lot on angular momentum, I'm just going to be going over a few concepts. So a person stands at the center of a frictionless turntable with arms outstretched at five and a five kilogram dumbbell in each hand. Five kilograms. Five kilograms. He is set rotating, making one revolution in two seconds. Okay, so one revolution, two seconds. Find his final angular velocity if he pulls his dumbbell inwards to his stomach. His moment of inertia without dumbbells is three kilogram meters squared with arms outstretched and 2.2 kilogram meters with his hands and his stomach. The dumbbells are one meter from the axis initially and 0.2 meters at the end. Okay, so lots going on here. One thing to know is whenever there's no force or torque, I should say torque, whenever there's no torque acting on an object, then that means that the angular momentum is conser conserved. So this is saying that the angular momentum beginning when he has his arms stretched out and his when he brings it in, is conserved since there's no torque. There's nothing acting on him, preventing him from speeding up or slowing down. Uh, even though he does speed up, he, there's no force or there's no torque that's making that happen. So we're going to look at the angular momentum at the beginning and then the angular momentum later on. So as we know, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Same thing with angular momentum. Instead of mass, it's inertia rotation inertia and then the velocity is angular velocity so we're going to do inertia times angular velocity is equal to the inertia times final angular velocity let's say final inertia but the inertia is a little bit complicated it says his moment of inertia without dumbbells three kilogram meters per second with arm outstretched so it's three when it's outstretched but there's also inertia from this dumbbell and from this dumbbell we're going to treat them as point particles and remember, inertia is equal to sum of all masses r squared. So for the one dumbbell, we're going to say 5r being, what's the, how far is he? The dumbbells are 1 meter from the axis initially. Okay, so it's 1 meter. So that's going to be 1 squared plus another 5, uh, 1 squared equals omega. Maybe actually I should write this down. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to find what the total inertia is. So their total inertia of the body plus the inertia of the dumbbell plus the inertia of the other dumbbell, okay? And I'm just writing that all out right here times the angular velocity. Uh, buh, buh, buh. So a person stands at the table da, 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 and he is set rotate making one revolution in two seconds. So what I know is his angular velocity is going to be he goes two pi one revolution in two seconds okay so that's his angular velocity now let's find out so now he's going to have less inertia because he's going to be bringing in the dumbbells okay so when his the total inertia uh we know is 2.2 when with his hands at his stomach 2.2 but plus now we have to do the dumbbell so mr squared mass of the dumbbell is still five but now at 2.2 meters at the end so it's going to be 0.2 squared plus 5.2 squared. And now what we can find is the final angular velocity, which we're looking for. So there's a lot of math here. Let's just kind of do it slowly. So 3 plus 5 plus 5 times 2 pi divided by 2. So this side here, we have 40.84 is equal to, let me try to do this, 0.2 squared times 5 times 2 plus 2.2 so it's going to be 2.6 omega final so let's now just do a little bit simple algebra 40.84 divided by 2.6 is equal to 15.7 radians per second okay less inertia so he's going to be moving quicker right all right, let's look at the next example. All right, so a door one meter wide, okay, one meter wide, okay. Can't, so this is kind of like the bird's eye view. This is the bird's eye view here. Uh, mass of 15 kilograms, sorry, mass of 15 kilograms, one meter wide, 
uh, can freely rotate about a vertical axis through its hinge. Okay, so this is the hinge. Uh, a bullet with a mass of 10 grams. I'm going to change this to be 0 0.01 kilograms. Okay. And a speed of 400 meters per second strikes the center of the door in a direction perpendicular to the door and embeds itself. Find the door's angular speed. So we want to know how fast the door is going to be moving after it's hit. So again, what we're going to have is, this is like the collision problems with momentum, but now what we're going to do is the angular. So at the beginning, we want to find what the total angular momentum is before the bullet hits it, and then we want to find what the total angular momentum is after it hits it. So this is a little bit confusing. So as we learned before, uh, angular momentum is equal to I omega. Okay? And... When we're dealing with something like a point particle here, we can change this a little bit because we know the, the inertia of a point particle is just mr squared. And then we also know that we can change omega. We can change omega to be v squared over r squared. Um, let me just... Oh, let me just... Say, omega r is equal to v. So then we know that omega is equal to v over r. Oh, I sh why am I doing squared? I shouldn't do squared. So it's going to be m over r and then v. So then this also simplifies. This is for point particles, right? So this is for point particles, which the bullet is. We can change this to be, this is going to be equal to, getting rid of one of the r's, m v r. Okay, that's the, this is going to be the angular momentum for point particles. All right, so now that I found that, I could put that here. So I have MVR, and then this is going to equal the inertia total of the door and the bullet plus the angular momentum final, which I guess this is what we're looking for, the door's angular speed. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. The mass, so the only thing that's moving at the beginning is the bullet, and the bullet is 0 0.01 kilograms. We know it's moving 400 meters per second, but with the radius. What is the radius? So... What we notice about the bullet is it's not rotating at all. Okay, so where where is it rotating? But the thing is, it has potential to rotate an object. So it has potential to rotate this door here. So it's going to hit this door at this point right here. And once it hits it, it's going to rotate this door. So we're going to take the radius. The radius is going to be from where it has potentially able to rotate something. So it's going to hit it from the axis of rotation, which is right here, which is going to be 0.5 meters because the whole door is one meter. Okay, so it's going to be 0.5. And now it's going to equal the total inertia of the door. Uh, we should know that the door has an inertia of, it fits on the hinge, one-third ml squared, plus it's going to have the bullet lodged inside of it, so that's going to be mass of the bullet, r squared, and then it's going to be omega final. So let me kind of simplify some things over here. 400 times 0 0.01 times 0 0.5. And it's going to give us 2. Whoops. 2 is equal to 1 third mass. And this is going to be mass of the door, which is going to be 15 kilograms. Length of the door, which is 1 squared. Plus mass of the bullet, which is 0 0.01. And radius of the bullet, again, is 0.5 squared. Omega and then all times omega final. Now let's let me simplify this a little bit. Two is equal to one third. Whoopsies, one third times fifteen plus point oh one point five squared, and then we get five point oh oh two five if you want five point oh oh two five omega final. So now let's do this two divided by answer we get 0.4 uh, radians per second so we get omega final equals 0 0.4 radians per second okay now is kinetic energy conserved what we should know is this is a perfectly inelastic collision right it gets lodged into the door so if it's a perfectly inelastic collision that means momentum is not conserved you can do the math but you're going to realize that momentum is not conserved Momentum, not, not, 
Not momentum conserved. All right, here we go. All right, let's look at the next problem. All right, a metal bar is hanging from a, a hook in, in the ceiling, okay, like this. When it's suddenly struck by a ball that is moving horizontally. The ball is covered with glue, so it sticks to the bar. So it's going to stick, it's going to lump onto this ball and to this bar. Uh, during the collision, uh, the ball covered with glue, so it sticks to the collision. During the collision, A, angular momentum is conserved. B, angular momentum and linear momentum is conserved. C, linear momentum is conserved. So usually when there's a collision that happens, there's two things that's conserved. The angular momentum is conserved and the linear momentum is conserved. However, in this case, if this door or this hinge or this whatever this is, this wall is going to rotate like this, but it's not really going to be moving linearly. And it can't really move linearly because it's attached to this hook over here. So since it's attached to the hook, it can't move linearly. There's a force acting against it. If there's a force preventing something from moving, that means that it's not going to be conserved. So in this case, only the angular momentum is going to be conserved and not the linear momentum. Okay, last one. A wooden uniform bar is at rest in space. Okay, so it's in space. It has a mass of two kilograms. So this two kilograms and a length of 1.5 meters. On one end of the bar, it is struck by a clay ball of mass 0.3 kilograms that is moving with a speed of 2.4 meters per second. The clay ball sticks to the wood. So again, sticks right here. At what point does the wooden bar rotate when struck? At what point does the wooden bar rotate when struck? Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, okay, so to find this, we want to find where does it rotate, right? So it's going to be rotating around its center of mass. We don't know what that is, but it's going to be like around here. It's not going to be directly in the middle because this ball is going to be lumped onto it. So we have to find what the center of mass is. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, center of mass. And what this is going to be equal to is M1 plus, oops, M1, X1. Hopefully you guys remember the center of mass formula. Uh, M1, shoot. <laughs> M1, X1 plus M2, X2, because there's two objects, all over M1 plus M2, all over all the masses. So, okay, so let's see. Mass of the first one is 0.3. X1, I'm just going to say this is going to be 0. We're going to make this the reference point, and I'm going to say it's right on the reference point, so that's 0. Plus this other object, which is the door thing, 2 kilograms, and its center of mass is right there, 1.5, so that's going to be 0.75 meters. Okay. And then, so what we can do after that is we can divide this by all the mass, so 2 plus 0.3. And now we can find what the uh, center of mass position is, okay? So I'll put that my calculator, 2 times 0.75 divided by 2.3. And we get 0.65 meters. So we know that this is going to be rotating 0.65 meters from the top. Uh, so that's what it's going to, oops. Okay? So it's going to be rotating right there, 0.65 meters. Okay. How fast is the clay and wooden ball move translationally after it's struck? So what's important to know is, remember, when this thing hits, it's going to be rotating, but it's also going to be moving linear because it's in space. There's no friction. There's nothing preventing from moving. So again, there's two things to know. Momentum is going to be conserved and angular momentum is conserved. Since we just want to know how it's going to be moving translationally, we just want, we just care about how it's going to be moving linearly. So momentum. So at the beginning, the only thing that's moving is the clay ball. So I'm going to do mass of clay ball times velocity of clay ball. It's going to be equal. It's going to get stuck. So then it's going to be mass of clay ball plus the mass of the door and velocity final. And we want to know uh, what this velocity final is. So mass of clay ball, 0.3. Velocity of the ball, 2.4 is equal to 0.3 plus 2 V final. Now we get V final is equal to 2.4 times 0.3 divided by 2.3, which is going to be 0 0.31 meters per second. All right, and that is this whole chapter. Thanks for watching. If you're able to watch all of it, great job and good luck with everything else you have to learn. Bye.